Ciao, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go over what I left behind in the last few videos, which you can find over here, uh, which is drawing on Google Maps. So what I did in the last videos was showing you how to add markers and clustering markers inside Google Maps using Jetpack Compose. While in today's video, I want to show you what else we can draw on a Google Maps instance of Jetpack Compose. So the Google Maps library comes with a few other composable that allows you to draw different shapes on top of a map. One of them is the circle, one of them is a polygon, and the other one is a polyline. All of them are pretty straightforward and really easy to use. Let's get into it. So let's start with a circle. I'm going to copy paste this circle here inside of the Google Map uh, the function. So we have a Google Map composable function that as a last parameter, accept a content, which is a, com a composable, which accept a, a Google Map composable function. Circle is one of them. It's a composable, but a Google Map composable. It's an annotation. And a circle accept a few parameters. One of them is the center, obviously. And I would say that the other really important ones are the radius, the fill color, the stroke color, stroke pattern, stroke width, and if it's visible or not. Since we're drawing on um, Google Maps, another really important one would be the Z index, which allows you to specify which drawing is on top of the other, so which one will be basically draw after the other. So if I go ahead and launch the app in the emulator, you will see that there will be a really small circle, which you might have missed because it's now covered by the tower bridge icon. But if we zoom in a bit, I draw a circle in the Tower of London with a color of blue, an alpha of 0.5, the radius is 50, and there is a stroke width, but since the stroke pattern is now, it, it's not drawn. So there is basically a circle without any border on its edges. Now, if we, we can change, we can customize it. The circle center is defined below here as, uh, as the tower bridge location. Nothing really special about it. The clickable will basically tell us if the click on it is handle or not. And if you set clickable to true, you will the what you define inside of the on click function would actually gives you the circle that is clicked. Um, that function is going to be executed. I can show you that if I go here and do a log dot d circle and I don't know the circle. Let's go with the radius. Um, and then I execute this thing. You will see that since the circle is clickable and the onClick function logs something, if I go ahead and click on the circle, we get the logs. So yeah, you can execute whatever you want on the onClick of a circle. Now, let's go ahead and see something else that we can draw on the maps. Let's go with the polyline, which is really simple. It basically connects points on the map with a line. So it accepts our points, which requires a list of lat long uh, objects. This as well can be clickable or not. You can define the color. You can define the end cap and the start cap. Both of those are cap. And there are a few ones that you can use. The butt cap, round cap, and square cap. Uh, so, for example, I'll go with the end cap as button cap. And let's go with the square cap 
as the start cup. And then you need to define the pattern. So how the line it's actually defined. Right now I am using dashes and dots. So this polyline will draw a dash of a 15 length, a dot, a dash, a dot, a dash, and a dot. And the width is also, it also defines how thick the line will be. So let's go ahead and launch this one as well and see how the polyline is drawn. <coughs> think the emulator crashed. So let's go ahead and launch this one as well. And if we zoom in a bit, we can see that this polyline has dashes and points. Zooming, zooming in won't let you see better because the definition of the width dashes length, it's basically in defined on the map itself. So they will scale the more you zoom in, as you can see. Let's see if we can see the cap. Here we could see a square cap. Not really. But here and on this one as well, there is the clickable Boolean that you can define and the on click function, which here as well, you will get the polyline object that you clicked upon to handle the click accordingly. The last thing that I want to show you would be the polygon. And this is the more complex one of the three of them. So it also, as the polyline accepts a list of points and it then tries to connect all of them, creating and closing a polygon. So based on how many points you provide to the list of points, it will draw either a triangle if you pass three points, a square or whatever if you provide four, five and six. So here I define three points so here I define three points, as you can see, one is the London Eye, one is Buckingham Palace, and one is the British Museum. And if you, uh, you can see that the color is red with an alpha of 0 0.5. Uh, there are no holes in the polygon. These holes are list of list of lat longs. So you basically can define the holes of the polygons. Then there is the stroke color, the stroke joint type, the stroke pattern, and the stroke width, which basically defines the corner, the, the border, sorry, of the polygon that you are drawing on the map. And then again, if it's visible, the Z index, so if you draw multiple of them all together, you can choose which one is draw on top of the other. And here as well, you can define the on click and get the polygon instance as well. Now I say that the polygon is the more complex of the three of them. 
And that's because the location has to be in order. And what I mean by has to be in order um, is that if we go ahead and draw another one, uh, which I defined already down below here, which has set four points. And as you can see, the four points are the British Museum. So it would be this one here, the London Eye, the second one, third one would be the Buckingham Palace, and then there would be Marble Arc, which would be around here. So let's go ahead and define uh, the Z index as two. So it will be draw on top of the red one. So yeah, the it's dark gray with a black outline. And as you can see, it's drawn above the second one and the points are drawn correctly. Now, if I change the Z index, for example, to be 0.5, if this polygon will be drawn below the other one, which has a Z index of one. And as you can see, the Z index takes priority. Now let's go back to 1.5, just to have it above the first one we draw. And then I'll show you that changing the order of the points will change how the polygon is drawn. So for example, we have, as I said here, the British Museum as the first one, the London Eye as the second one, Buckingham Palace as the third one, and Marble Arc as the fourth one. And then Google Maps will automatically connect the first and the last one together to close the polygon. Now, if we change and go, for example, with Buckingham Palace as the last one and Marble Arc as the third one, we will see that it will try to draw the polygon, but it will fail because from here it will draw to Marble Arc and then to Buckingham Palace and then back to the British Museum. And the border of the polygon, it's drawn in the correct way. But as you can see, there is no background of it. So the fill color is not capable of understanding which is the area that the polygon has to draw, to draw, to draw. Uh, which is the area in which the polygon has to draw in. So let's go back and resettle the polygon's points in the right way. So we will be able to see the polygon draw on the screen. There we go. So you need to pay a little bit of attention when you define the order of the points. Try to have them uh, like in... Um, Try to have them in order so you won't have to debug and see why it's not drawing the inside of the polygons and why what are not. Another thing I would like to show you is what are the required arguments for each one of them and which one are not. So for the circle, the only one is the center. All the other ones have uh, default values, but keep in mind that if you don't change the radius, you will never see anything on the screen. So I would say that the radius has to be defined as well if you want to actually see something. Another one that you want to change is the fill color because otherwise it will be transparent. So, I mean, you might want to draw a circle to handle a click in a given position without drawing anything, without actually drawing anything on the screen. But I think that this function are here to actually draw on the maps, not to handle a click. So I would say center, fill color and radius at the least to actually change, um, to change those three in order to get something on the screen. Then the polygon is really similar. The only one that you have to define are the points. But if you, it, it actually has a fill color in it, which is black. So if you don't define it, it will be drawn on the screen. So you, in this case, you can actually only define the points. Let's give it a try. So if I only define the 
points in one of the polygons that I have, which was the red one, we will see a black polygon on the screen. There we go. Perfect. And then the last one would be the polyline, which also requires you to only define the points. And once again, the color, it's black. So you can actually define only the points. Now let's go ahead and show you all of them together on the maps. And you can see that you will see that everything can be drawn together. You don't have to draw only polygons, solid triangles, or only circles, or only polylines. You can have them match all together. Here, both of them as are have the same that index, so they are drawn in the order you define them. And yeah, so Google Maps actually gives you more function to draw on the map. One is the tile overlay and one is the ground overlay. Uh, the tile overlay requires a tile provider. The ground overlay requires a position and an image. The image is a bit more descriptive. While the tile overlay accept a tile provider and it's a little bit more complex. So let me know down in the comment if you want me to go through how to actually use those two as well in order to add something more complex on top of your Google Maps in Jetpack Compose, which will allow you to draw something more interesting as, I don't know, a heat map or maybe just place an image that you want, an overlay that you want, an SVG that you want on top of the on on top of your Google Maps instance. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.